What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm Necrocknick. I'm Jamin John. And we have an album review for you, and one that I've actually been anticipating for a while because I've been getting more into this band over the last couple of years. We are going to go over the latest offering from Knocked Loose. You won't go before you're supposed to. Shout out to those who did go before they were supposed to, though. I mean, there was probably a couple of mishaps there. As a kid, I went a lot before I was supposed to. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm older now, and that doesn't occur nearly as much. Still the isolated incidents, though. So, I mean, I'm in my 40s, man. You can't trust farts anymore at this age. This also comes out on the 10th of May on Pure Noise Records. This band formed in 2013 in Kentucky. This is their third full length overall. I got into them with their second album, Different Shade of Blue, which I thought was pretty damn awesome. I actually went and got their first album, Laugh Tracks, dug that one as well. And recently, my brother-in-law saw them open up for Gojira, and I asked him to pick me up a copy of their EP, A Tear in the Fabric of Life. And that one was a bit of a change in this band's overall sound. Flat out, I would describe this band as like metallic hardcore. I think that's pretty, you know, good baseline descriptor of them. But here lately, especially on this one and this last EP, there has been a welling of extra heaviness that has come out in their sound. And while I would say like it definitely brings in some elements of extreme metal, like there's definitely some death metal riffing, sludge, grindcore. There's also a lot of other elements in play that just make this an absolutely vicious sounding band. I've never really been into this band. I've heard them here and there. You kind of can't not hear them. These guys had kind of, I would state, kind of a meteoric rise to fame. They got real big real quick. Yeah, dude, they played Coachella. Yeah. So. And, and got people banging their heads. And like, it looked like the standard people that go to Coachella were like saying the words back. Like, what, they actually know this band? Right? Yeah, and I just never really got into them, and I don't know, I mean, to each their own, I suppose. They were never for me, but at the same time, I knew this record was coming out, and I heard one of the singles, and I kind of really liked it, so I thought I'd give it a chance. Yeah, and uh, man, I, I gotta say, like, this is probably their most explosive, visceral, nasty release yet. This thing is only 27 minutes long, and somehow this feels complete and vicious from start to finish. Like there really is not a punch pulled throughout this entire listen. Their sound is very percussive, I would mm -hmm. say, like across the board. And I'm not just talking about the drums, I'm talking about guitars, bass, vocals, and whatever noises and bits of feedback and extra percussion this band peppers in. There is a feeling on this album, an, an atmosphere, and it's violent and it feels like just like restraining someone that is just absolutely enraged, knowing full well that they're going to get out and just tear your face off. Restraining a drunk. Yeah. Kind of like that. We've all watched Cops. We've yep. seen that episode. Yep. I've had your episode there. Yep. I've had buddies who need to be restrained because they're violently drunk. It's, it's not me. It's not important. It's not him. We don't actually drink all that much, but, you know, yeah. Even the short songs on here, again, for 27 minutes, even the shorter songs are violent. And when they do end, it's not so abruptly that you feel like you didn't get what you came for. And it's not just the band that makes this heavy. Like, the production of this record, I think, was designed to hurt you. I don't know who produced this album. We couldn't find it's much on it. Notes. It's not in the liner notes. And of course, Metal Archives is fucking stupid and doesn't have this on their lineup either, which is dumb. We'll get into that at a later date. But everything just sounds visceral and crunchy and just out to get you. The vocals are pretty out front. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But the guitars are crunchy. The drums are punchy and in your face. And like everything just kind of has a hum behind it. Yeah, there's like a crackle and it's not just the feedback on here. But you know, just when you feel like you're getting settled into a particular sound or a particular groove or breakdown, this band likes to change frequently. Like there's a lot of these big glitchy transitions, which generally I'm not like the biggest fan of. Like I still like old school kind of spazzy stuff like Dillinger Escape Plan and Botch. And this band definitely holds on to a bit of that, but it's a more modern sort of vibe. And honestly, it works. Like there really isn't a point on here where I feel like these frequent transitions 
hurt the flow of the song. No, they don't feel disjointed. They feel like they were meant to be there. Like they pieced it together like a really crazy jigsaw puzzle and like everything was intricately placed in the right place at the right time to make it move correctly. It just, it, it was crazy because they skip around a lot. The song Suffocate in particular feels like it has like eight or nine transitions before the vocals really even start to settle in. There's lots of isolated chugs into breakdowns, D beats, blast beats there are grind core mm -hmm. fits all over here like kind of comparable to like nails or end their last album nails is Very a really smart. good comparison because it's got that that hiss and that hum of everything in the background all the time that noise that nails has these yeah. guys have incorporated into their sound too and suffocate also features poppy and i've never listened to poppy ever i know she was supposed to tour with the deftones and then the whole pandemic came and that never happened but i've never listened to her but she fits this oddly well and yeah. she even has a like a, a screamed vocal pattern too yeah she does screams whispers it definitely adds the more unsettling vibe of the whole atmosphere especially that song like that song there's some quiet more muted moments i wouldn't say necessarily muted because there's scraping something going on in the background but it gives you like a second to breathe before the next haymaker of a breakdown comes in because dude this album is jam-packed full of just insanely heavy breakdowns. And they're not your typical breakdowns either. Like they're still chuggy, but the way that they're presented is typically like in a, an off time pattern or some sort of syncopation that isn't typical. Like there's not a, a typical trope for it. Yeah, like you get a lot of like stuttering kicks and like just interesting riff patterns with like strange dissonant accents or just like a squeal on it. But again, it's kind of how they like stitch these together, like these weird patterns and weird shifts. Like you get some crazy turnovers and breakdowns all of a sudden. And then on top of that, you have Brian Garris's vocals, which he is going through fits of rage on here. But this also shows like a little bit of a change that kind of showed up on the last EP is there's a little bit more of this death metal slash almost kind of grindcore yeah. sort of violence to this. Like there's more deep vocals from the guitarist and there's more of a give and take on here. Well, it's not that hardcore isn't heavy because most of hardcore, you know, the goal of hardcore is to be violent and angry and in your face and whatnot. But I feel like a hardcore band that gets as heavy as this kind of has no choice but to draw from death metal, the heaviest of the heavy. Like you could just see how it would intertwine and you could see how you would have to go there yeah if I'm, you wanted to get heavy like this and honestly i would say it's always been a part of their sound like if you go back to laugh tracks like there's tracks and then they have flat out death metal riffs like double time yeah you know almost like obituary and bolt thrower grooves they're just done in a hardcore fashion here it's a little bit more broken up and these outbursts feel even more violent. And I like how they kind of play off of that. Like you have hardcore D beats with like really interesting, like off time patterns and stutters in them. Like the uh, D beat that pops up onto the calm that keeps you awake. It's almost kind of queuing you up for an off time breakdown, which inevitably does come after that. But the whole thing about this album is this sort of dimed intensity. Like even in the more quiet moments on here, Again, you kind of feel like there's something welling up in the background. Like the end of Take Me Home has this little nugget of bluegrass at the end. And, you know, I mean, they're from Kentucky. But uh, you're not fooled for a second. You know what's coming. And what's coming is probably a breakdown that's going to hit similar to a sledgehammer to a pair of kneecaps. And to add to the, like, percussive nature of this, there's interesting atmospheric choices in terms of what they do to layer their sound. Mm -hmm. Like... I feel like there's extra percussion on here. Again, there weren't any liner notes for me to actually see like extra percussion listed or anything like that, but there's something more to some of these drum beats where they add like tribal accents or just like sort of a tapping. Well, there's definite extra percussion in the call that keeps you awake. They've got a tribal drum groove that's playing over this eerie melody thing, and then it's, it is straight up extra percussion. I'm not sure what all they're playing. Sounds like one of the extra percussionists in Slipknot just going crazy on something. But Take Me Home also features, I don't know, like what I would call like harsh electronic noise. Like there's this steady like electric hum and it kind of blends in with the riffs and the feedback mm -hmm. and kind of just creates this I don't know, like, Godflesh level yeah. sort of, like, dissonant electronic atmosphere in the background. And it's almost like a different form of heaviness on here. Like, 
They've already been through a lot of the breakdowns and squeals and D-beats and grindcore fits. It's like, no, we still have different ways to showcase how heavy we can be. And despite this being just absolutely brutal as hell, it's actually got a lot of good melodic hooks, which I was kind of surprised by. Uh, Slaughterhouse 2 has an absolutely catchy riff. The mm -hmm. uh, chorus riff, I think, is fantastic. And that one actually features Chris Motionless from Motionless and White, which... I've never been a huge fan of, but honestly, his guest appearance is pretty solid. I mean, I've never been like a huge fan of Poppy, though I haven't really listened to much, but both the guests, I think, are utilized well, but the song has like some flat out good melodic hooks on it. Same thing with songs like Piece by Piece and Don't Reach For Me. There's like good, solid, riffy hooks, and this isn't all just like syncopated open chugs. There's some like seriously nasty riffs on here. One that definitely I think stood out for the both of us was Blinding Faith. That thing is not only packed with a bunch of cool stutter grooves and a bunch of cool syncopation, but that song is out to fuck you up. There's probably eight or nine different breakdowns in there, and they're all extremely heavy. The, the whole like emotion and vibe of that song is just in your face. But on the other side of the coin, the last track, and I think the longest track on this album, Sit and Mourn, hit in a lot of ways I didn't expect it to. First of all, it opens up with this really pretty ambient melody. In fact, the whole setup for what was to come reminded me of something Tesseract would pull. Yeah, there's like this electric hum in the background. It kind of sounds like flies a little bit, but there's yep. also birds and, you know, this clean, haunting melody. And again, at no moment in here, I'm like, oh no, it's just gonna sound like this for the entire track. No. Uh, uh, and I, I was right. It explodes violently into just a nasty breakdown. But this song really kind of thrives on the melody and staying slower, mm -hmm. more somber. And I really like this one in terms of the transitions, too, because the transitions are less glitchy and more, like, well-paced. Like, yep. no, let's keep building this. And again, a lot of transitions, but it... it doesn't really let go of the melody like that ambient melody appears another time but when you get to the end it's got this really cool um like dissonant chord melody that they let ring out for quite some time and the space here just opens up it's, yeah it opens up in like this big lush field you know and you've got these giant dissonant riffs and just big open space and yeah. it's really cool yeah i mean it, it's probably but like probably the most like calm reflective moment but at the same time they're doing it their way which is uh heavy so yeah it, it kind of creates this totally different mood like it's almost more comparable to like post metal yeah uh but again like post metal as done by a band like jesus peace or uh all pigs must die so you know still absolutely just suffocatingly heavy but you know a little bit more I don't know, uh, spacious. Mm -hmm. And there are other moments on here of like distance and blast beats, kind of creating a little bit more atmosphere and getting away from the chuggy riffs. And it's nice to actually hear some of those moments broken up. But I think this last track is the one that really just kind of stands out. Like this is honestly, you know, probably the most different sounding song on here. Mm -hmm. And it really caps off the album really well. And there's a couple of like weird samples in there that just sound creepy, like they stole a little nugget from like the Blair Witch Project just to creep you out. But yeah, like overall this album is really, really nasty. Like in terms of any negatives on here, well, all right, this kind of goes back to the vocals. Uh, Brian Garris's vocals are definitely an acquired taste. Like I'm a longtime hardcore listener, so I'm kind of used to deliveries like this. Like kind of sounds a bit like uh, the old frontman of Snapcase, except in a higher register. And it's that higher register that has kind of, you know, put me off in past releases. But at the same time, he goes at it with such conviction on here. And it fits. It works with the music. And honestly, like, this is probably the first one where, like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it slide. He, he's, he's actually delivering the violent goods. And I guess I can say this too. While I don't necessarily like his higher pitched voice, it does also make it uniquely theirs. Like, I would definitely be able to turn this on and go, yep, that's knocked loose. And there'd be no way to really deny that. Yeah. No, he, he has a unique voice. And I like the fact that they are playing a little bit more with like vocal dynamics in terms of like the patterns and then 
backup vocals coming in. Like there's a lot of cool switch offs mm -hmm. on here, especially on Blinding Faith. Like there's like even a big pig growl on there too. It's a lot of fun to listen to, but yeah, like kind of the one thing that, you know, initially bugged me about this band, I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more lax on that one. Outside of that, there were a couple of tracks that didn't hit quite as hard, like the opening track, Thirst, is you know, a nice little like kind of like opening sampler of what's going to happen. Segue. Yeah. yeah. And the song Take Me Home, while I do like the fact that it is different and more based on like the harsh atmosphere, uh, it didn't gel with me as well as others. In fact, the track that kind of leads into it, Moss Covers All, it's under a minute, but I actually enjoyed that one a little bit more, and those two were almost kind of one song because they're linked by one particular creepy melody. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I really dig this album. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it four stars. This is absolutely vicious. Like, literally the heaviest thing I think this band has put out so far, and very much a continuation of their last EP. I like the direction this band mm -hmm. is going. It's vicious, it's dark, but it's also very emotional and like legit. When these breakdowns hit, gosh, ridiculously heavy. But it's not just all about like flexing muscles on here. It's showcasing some cool songwriting, some really interesting dynamics. And again, like rhythmically, this has a lot of cool patterns mm -hmm. to both the vocals, the drums, the guitars. This is just a flat out monster of an album. And yeah, like, again, the vocals aren't always my thing, but I cannot deny the conviction and emotion and contempt that uh, he throws out there with his voice. So yeah, this is a nasty album. Again, if you're a big fan of Jesus Peace, uh, Nails, All Pigs Must Die, I would even throw in Meshuggah too. Like, you know, there's a lot of Meshuggah vibes in here. Just check this out. This is a nasty album. I'm going to have to agree with Nick and give it four stars. As much of a fan as I wasn't of this band, I am now. It's very heavy. Again, all the grooves aren't typical hardcore grooves. Like, they draw from a lot of camps and they do it in a unique way that makes them sound individualistic as far as a band is concerned. Just the presentation of most of the grooves and most of the breakdowns is pretty spot on and while it sounds like a couple bands that I'm really into, they make it uniquely theirs. I wasn't expecting things like atmosphere. I definitely wasn't expecting dissonant atmosphere. And it's not just all straightforward chugs all the time. Like, I feel like this record is missing kind of like that bro attitude and more of a like, fuck you, we're pissed off, here's why. And that, that comes out in a lot of their songs. But it, for the most part, it's all fairly creative. Unique things like the drum and bass groove and Don't Reach For Me. If I really had to be honest about what that was, it sounded like something that was off early Incubus, like off of Science, or even Take Me Home with the weird industrial core thing. While that song wasn't really my jam, I've never heard anybody really do that before, never really incorporate hardcore and industrial and make it work as well as they did. Or songs like Sit and Mourn and the end of it, it took me a second, but I figured it out. The end of it sounds like newer Rivers of Nile. A little bit. Yep. A little bit. Full of skittering drum grooves, the constant transitions that are nailed really well. It's angry, it's violent, it's entertaining. The melodic hooks are in there just to keep you kind of guessing as to what comes around the next corner. The guitar tone too, I think reminds me a lot of Gojira. Like from Mars to Sirius era Gojira, which yeah. I didn't see coming either. So yeah, there's a bunch of things in here. If you're already a Knocked Loose fan, Check it out, they've definitely progressed. If you're not a Knocked Loose fan, there's stuff in here I guarantee that's gonna tickle your fancy. Yeah, so. this band got more popular and got heavier. And that doesn't often happen. Yeah, that's no, a weird when, trajectory. Yeah, normally like when it. bands, yeah, right. Yeah. Normally when bands get more popular, the sound goes <laughs> But in this case, they got more popular and they got better, so good yeah. job, guys. I hope this album sells well, just so you guys like, ah, oh, man, we got more popular. We have to get heavier now. <laughs> right. I like this. No, stick with it. Yep. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon if you'd like to help us out there. There's a link down below to ThrallsMetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel up in the bottom right hand corner of our banner. But if you're looking for Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to ThrallsMetal.com. We have t shirts, both old and new. The old ones are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats too. So, if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. And as always, tons of stuff going on at Thralls of Metal, album reviews, discography rankings. Meshuggah will happen after we get back from MDF. 
that'll be another thing for you to look forward to because I'm sure we're going to have shorts and pictures and all that crap from MDF because it's Maryland Death Fest and it's something that we both have come to look forward to over the last few years. And for anyone that wants to come and hang out and talk about Maryland Death Fest before we go, I will be joining a stream over on Future Ruins channel. Uh, Gas Mask and Hand Grenades be there, I believe, uh, Dreadful Minutes, as well as Black Room Secrets, I believe, too. We're just going to sit around and talk about all the bands and sort of plan our itinerary and who we want to see and such. It should be a good time. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard tonight. Check it out. But anyway, like I said, tons of stuff going on. We do it all for you guys. Thank you to all of you who continue to help us out and support us here at Thralls of Metal. Crazy. Yeah. We keep growing, but we do, and we couldn't do it without you guys, and we appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, you guys absolutely roll, and uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of collection update stuff I'm working on, as well as like a couple other projects. But yeah, perpetually busy because I want to keep you guys as entertained as possible. So once again, thank you all, and we will catch you later.